it's new battery day and I am so glad that these things don't weigh that much anymore. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Let's get this thing opened up. This one comes from my friends over at Truvalux and it is a 100 amp hour battery as you can imagine by the size of the box. You get two different size battery terminals so you can put lots of stuff on those lugs. Candy packets, don't eat those. Battery itself and some manuals. So we just did a review on these in a recent video and I am gonna put them to the test hardcore today because we have the 40 amp charger which is gonna be charging up the new battery. Let me get that all set up. This is my Power Queen battery charger and it has charged up so many batteries now. This thing is just a powerhouse. Turn it on and we're charging. So after that all gets charged, the next thing is that I'm going to use the load device that I have from MakerHawk and that is going to drain that battery back down and tell me how much I can get out of it. All right, we are fully charged now. It is time for a discharge. Let's get this charger out of here and then let's get this thing cabled up to our discharge device. We have to plug the load device in all by itself. That way the computer on the load device isn't drawing battery power as part of its measurement. Let's start the test. There we go. Big fan is moving some air now. And so this is a 100 amp hour battery at 10 amps of draw. It's gonna take us 10 hours. 10 times 10 is 100, right? We'll be back in 10 hours. On the back of the battery, we have two QR codes and we can just scan that with our phone and pick the one that works for us, the Play Store link. There we go. All right, so while the battery is discharging, we're gonna get some stats out of it from the Bluetooth app. Let me get the screen shared for you so you can play along at home too. I'm gonna to install then I'm gonna open. Please turn on Bluetooth. On. All right, I have turned on Bluetooth. Allow Truvalux to find, connect to, and determine the relative position of nearby devices. This is an Android thing that allows the Truvalux app to see the Bluetooth controller inside of the battery. And that's all it's going to do is look for relative position of nearby devices, just like it says. And then here's where it gets tricky. And I don't like that it does this, and it's not Truvalux that's doing this. It's Android that's doing this again. In order for the battery to be connected to the phone, you have to use Bluetooth. Bluetooth has an effective range of about 30 feet on a good day. And for some reason, <laughs> they also want to region lock it because I guess they think that I'm gonna be able to pick up a battery in the UK while I'm sitting in the US and they wanna prevent me from doing that by using my precise location to determine that I'm not in the UK where the battery is. Does that make sense to y'all? I, I can't be more than 30 feet. You don't need to know my GPS position. I'm either within 30 feet or I'm not. And if I'm not, then we ain't picking this up anyway. But you have to do precise. It's just, it's an Android thing. While using the app, and then here's all the stuff. You can see my camera, a couple of other batteries. So we have to figure out which battery this thing is. And usually, if it isn't directly labeled, you can go by the strongest signal, which might make it this DP0 whatever, whatever, 100A unit. But there's usually some kind of serial number or something on the battery that gives it away. So I'm gonna take a look for that real quick. QC pass sticker on one side. It's a good thing they believe that it passed. Pick up the battery and turn it around. Yeah, usually there's a sticker on these guys that says what's going on, but I am not seeing it. Is it on the bottom? That would stink. Nope, not on the bottom. Okay, so let's take a look at the owner's manual stuff here and see if that has any clue for us. Here's a getting started guide and it says charge battery for use. We did that. Don't lick the terminals. We didn't do that. Don't use for motorcycle starting. It's a heavy battery for a motorcycle. It's like 22 pounds. It's not a heavy battery. It's a heavy battery for a motorcycle. Okay, so nothing in the quick start guide. Nice to meet you. They'd like a review. They'd like a feedback. As a token of our appreciation, we're offering you a special 40% refund on your next purchase. Just email your order number to us. Note, one free battery and one 40% refund per account, no matter how many orders are placed. So if you do the review, you get a free battery. And if you do the reorder, you get 40% off. That's pretty slick, I like that. I like saving money. Warranty card, what to do in case you have warranty needs and a user manual. Somewhere in this user manual, there should be some information. There it is, the Android app. And I was right, it is that DP blah, 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 100A thing. But again, the battery is right there and the phone is right here. So look for the strongest signal. It's gonna be an easy way to do it. 
let's get back over to the screen recording. And I'm going to pick the DP04S007L4S100A because they're really good at naming things. Just tap on it. And it is now on. Let's go to dashboard. And it says these charging and discharging things at the top, these are on off switches. So I can tell it do not allow charging. And I can tell it do not allow discharging, which is pretty cool. It's telling me that the SOC, the state of charge is 98%. The voltage is 13.2. The, the charging is minus 10 amps, which is true. Because it's not actually charging, it's discharging. And it's discharging at 10 amps, which would be the same as charging at negative 10 amps. So we have plenty of RAM in these devices and plenty of storage space. You could have changed that word to say discharging or something along those lines. But that 10 amps matches up with that 10 amps up there, which is really cool. Power is 132 watts, so if you take 13.2 volts times 10 amps, you get 132 watts. That's Ohm's law for you. That works out pretty well. Those numbers are interchangeable. If you have any two, you can find the third. And then when it comes to watts, this is really cool. So this is a 13.2 volt battery, 12 volt battery, you know, whatever. I take the total number of watts out that I got it. If I'm going to convert this from 12 volts to, say, 48 volts or to 9 volts or something like that, I can do some math with the voltage and I can do some math with the wattage to get the estimated runtime capacity, etc., on different voltages. Ohm's law is pretty cool. One of the things I will grant that high school algebra could have done for me, but they could have done it with solar panels and batteries and inverters and stuff, and then I would have, you know, had some practical application instead of just do it because I said so. This is fourth period math, and this is what you do in fourth period math. And 9 hours, 48 minutes available time. That seems about right. Cycles is zero, but it did have a QC passed sticker on the side. So there should be at least one cycle on this. And I wonder if they start at like minus one to allow the manufacturer to get a complete test out. But capacity's 98.1. So there's, there's some good features in here. 98.1 out of 100 amp hours. That will tell me. I can just look at the Bluetooth app before I go out to my, my parks on the air activation or before I go out for field day or my weekend camping trip or whatever. And I can tell, do I need to charge this or am I okay? You can get a good park activation on six amp hours. So, you know, this will last you quite a bit. Let's talk about cells. All right, so we have four cells inside and they are all relatively balanced. 3.3 all across the board and then 9, 10, 11. That's really close enough. And then MOS or T1. So it's giving me the temperature inside the unit, 28.6 Celsius, 83.5 Fahrenheit, because we're discharging it, she's working hard. And then this thing has low temp cutoff and high temp cutoff. Let's see where those are. First, I gotta stop the screen recording, which it does when you turn the phone off, that's cool. All right, let's look at the high temp cutoff and the low temp cutoff in the manual. Low temperature charging protection, 32 Fahrenheit, and below, it will not allow charging. High temp charging protection. Above 131 Fahrenheit, it will not allow charging. Max continuous discharge current, 100 amps. So you could drain this battery entirely in one hour if you wanted to. All right, so this is what I like to see. 105 pulled out. We pulled 105.7 amp hours out of this battery. And this is a 100 amp hour battery. And I have the zoom on. Ooh. I can't unzoom while we're recording. Okay, that's a new trick on the camera. So this is pretty cool. So I recently did a review over on my RV channel of a different battery. It was a 150 amp hour battery and it got 147 or 148 amp hours out of it. This is a 100 and we got 105. And the BMS is like right on the edge and it's doing its, its trip thing where it's trying to put out some voltage and then cutting back off. It's doing the right thing. But the point I want to make here is that would you rather get a 100 amp hour battery that gave you 105 out of the gate or would you rather have a 100 amp hour battery that gave you 98 out of the gate so these things this is why we do these drain tests you know make sure that it does the thing that it's supposed to do and this one here passed so the only thing left is price because we've got 105 amps out of a 100 amp hour battery we've got bluetooth monitoring we've got temperature cutoff high and low it's the only thing left is price i guess it is the next morning and i wanted to show you guys this it is at 11.5 volts coming out of the battery and what i want to do is i want to start this thing up while we're looking inside the bms so 
let's get over to the workbench. So this is one of the neat things. I showed you the screen on the battery discharge device. It's showing 11 point something volts and this has a cutoff on the BMS internally. So what'll happen is normally without the Bluetooth setting, what I will get is the external reading on the, on the battery terminals because that's all I have. But with this one here, I will get the internal reading. We're gonna take a look at the screen recording on the phone, let me bring that up right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the button and start the test again. We're already drained. We already know that we got 105 amp hours out of it. 105.724. And I'm gonna try again, and we're gonna see it shut off the, the external up here. So let me get that going. And we will do start. And we immediately start up. And you can see on the screen here, capacity zero. We're pulling something out, minus 10 amps. It ain't gonna last for long. Available time, zero, zero minutes, capacity zero, voltage 11.4, and any second now, this thing should shut off. I can see the voltage ticking down on the tester up here. It is saying 10.97 volts, and that's because of the wiring in between and stuff like that, and we're showing 11.2 volts here. Usually these things have a 10 volt cutoff where they just will not allow any more power to go out after 10 volts, so that's what we're waiting for, 11.1. It's kind of like a reserve on a fuel tank. 11.0, 10.9, 10.8, getting down there. 10.6, it's showing 10.3 up there. It looks like we're gonna get a whole nother amp hour out of this. So the cool part about the load testing device is it just pulls power and it just calculates the power that it pulls. It doesn't have any built-in shutoffs or anything along those lines other than its own internal heat protection where the battery, the BMS and the battery is where all the brains are. And usually I don't get to show you this because usually battery BMSs don't have Bluetooth. So that's one of the cool features about this battery is that it's got the Bluetooth. I keep looking at the screen because I'm waiting for it to shut off. 10.1 volts on the BMS. We're at 9.8 on the load device. 10.0, it should shut off here real soon. 9.9 .9 volts, 9.8 volts, and it just shut off. Perfect. All right, let me show you that. So it says that it's on and you can see that it's going between constant current and unregulated and it's getting a little tiny bit of voltage out of here as the battery sticks its head above water and wants to see what's going on. But we're done. We got 106.867, and I think it was 105.7 something. So we got another amp hour out of it. And it gave it a try again. There you go. And then you can see over here on the BMS screen that the discharging is turned off and the battery's at 10 volts and charging is zero. So it's neither charging and it's not negative something. So it's not discharging either. There's no wattage going out. We're at zero, zero on the amp hours. It just decided to come up a little bit again and pop on. So it is right on that, that 10 volt boundary. It's doing what it's designed to do. I'm gonna turn this thing off. And then we're gonna start recharging. And what I'll do is I will leave that BMS app up and running. This guy here is off so we can unplug it. And then that leaves me with these alligator clips to deal with. So they are done and free and not part of the testing scenario anymore. And what I have is a solar charge controller here from Power Queen. And this is a power distribution panel. You can see I'm getting power from the sun and it's going into the distribution panel. And then we're gonna put it out into the battery and you'll see the BMS kick into life as soon as this thing realizes there's a battery attached to it. And we are pulling three amps. It's MPPT is starting to find its magic. Here we go. We're putting 12 amps into the battery now. And what does the BMS? The BMS says we are charging at 15 amps. And we're putting 10.7 uh, volts in. And we're putting 160 watts in. And it's gonna take six and a half hours to charge at its current level of power that it is receiving. So now I've got my big boy charger out. This can only do what the sun provides and it's gonna be somewhere around 12 to 14 amps into the battery and that's gonna take a long time to charge as you guys saw. This one here is 40 amps into the battery and we've got the screen up and running so we'll be able to see what the Bluetooth screen shows. 
as we turn her on. And we're now charging. Let me turn that light off. Oh, it's dark in here now. And that screen is showing all of the juice coming out. We've got 40.1 amps going in, 460 watts of power, and it's gonna take two and a half hours to fill up. Excellent. That's what I like to see. All right, so the battery passed. We did a full charge, a full discharge, and we did a little bit of experimentation with the built-in Bluetooth BMS. And I really like getting all that extra information because I like geeking out on nerd stats. And now we're doing a full recharge. So if you would like a battery like this, I will leave some links in the description down below for more info for you. On your way down there, there is a subscribe button. It'd be really awesome if you clicked on that subscribe button because I am always looking for more subscribers. And the more you click on it, the more you tell people like me that we should make more videos like this. And if that's not your jam, there's a video right here I think you might be interested in next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.